Hello, my name is Daniel from Teach Kids Robotics, and today we'll be talking about how do robots and AI learn, an introductory explanation to machine learning. So what is machine learning? Machine learning is the study of computer algorithms that allow computer programs to automatically improve through experience. And you gotta remember with robots, they're really computer programs and software that are allowing robots to really do things. And it's used today in things like self-driving cars, if you look at Tesla, being able to identify other cars and where lines are on the road, predicting home prices, or even teaching robots to play games or do things like fold laundry. So what are common types of machine learning? The first common type of machine learning is known as supervised learning. It refers to machine learning where the algorithm is trained on labeled data to predict or map input features to corresponding output labels. And you can see in this example, if we were trying to understand what a shape was and classify what a given shape is based on the input, we can do that using a supervised learning model. And the two common supervised learning use cases that we'll be talking about are classification and regression, really being able to separate what is a circle from a square or being able to guess with a lot of data what that underlying model is that represents the data so that you could actually use it to do predictions. We also have unsupervised learning, which is machine learning where the algorithm explores and identifies patterns or structures in unlabeled data without specific guidance. In this case, consider we had shapes, but we never had labels assigned to the shapes. Our algorithm or our robot doesn't know what is a circle or what is a square. In this case, the algorithm can just come up with groupings on its own, based on associations. This is what we often refer to as clustering, being able to take just raw, unlabeled data and figuring out associations between different groups or clusters of data. And in this case, we can either cluster and associate based on the color of the shape, or again, based on the volume or the size that this shape takes up. Finally, I also want to highlight something known as reinforcement learning, and this one's very commonly used in robotics. This is a machine learning where an agent learns to make decisions through trial and error in an environment, receiving feedback in the form of rewards or penalties to improve its actions over time. And we can see here in this graphical example, the robot can learn to move the green cylinder into the red circle by being rewarded if it does so correctly. By just trying enough times random arm movements, eventually it learns what makes a good movement based on the reward it received for getting the green cylinder close to that red circle. And we call this an objective function, which is how we can mathematically explain what we want the robot to do and what the reward is based on. And in this case, it could be how close the green cylinder is to the red circle. This allows us to encode that reward and the robot is gonna be attempting to maximize its reward, which in this case means maximizing the correct behavior that we encode. Let's talk a little more now in detail about the supervised machine learning, where we have a lot of labeled data. One use case that's very interesting is prediction. Given a lot of data and a measure of correctness, we can train or predict a function that allows us to predict a given action. One of the most basic forms of prediction are known as a linear regression. If the question is linear and the underlying answer can be represented in two dimensions, the linear regression effectively allows us to find a line based on a series of points. In this example, we ask, can we predict the force needed to shoot a basket from a specific distance? And the answer is yes, because we have these two dimensions. We have the distance from the hoop. We have the force we're trying to guess is the right force to make the basket. And we can find this using this linear regression technique. So consider trying to play basketball using machine learning. Consider if you're a robot, you have no idea what the right thing to do is, but you wanna learn. You're here to gather data or you have data available to you. The rule is simple. You shoot the ball a given distance X from the hoop and you shoot it with a given force Y. So what we're trying to predict is what force Y should we use for each distance X so that the ball goes into the hoop no matter where 
we're attempting to take the shot from. When we begin, without data, we have no idea of how much force is needed in order to make or miss a shot. But what we can do is actually shoot the ball randomly and learn what makes a good shot versus a bad shot by recording the force y at distance x whenever we make a basket. When we have enough of these points, basically, force and distance, when we have enough of these shots made, we use this linear regression technique, finding a line from a set of points, in order to find the line that will tell us for any distance x exactly what the force y is. And again, we remember that a line is represented with an equation y equals mx plus b. So as long as we have basically found the line that gives us the answer, we can plug any x into our equation and get the corresponding y. So this is really great, again, when the underlying problem that we're trying to predict based on the data can be represented with a linear solution or, or a line. So consider we start graphing and we start trying to build this line based off hoops that have gone in. We can see over time, we actually begin to get more accurate and we make more baskets. And we're gonna find actually that most of the shots that go in fall on a specific line if we were to plot them in a graph. And this line is what we consider the optimal solution. Think of it as the right answer for any given distance, what the force is that you wanna shoot at. And again, the linear regression, given these points of when we made a basket, is what allows us to find that line. So we can also visualize like this prediction line and the act of finding it over time. As we get more data points, we can come up with a more accurate line that more frequently predicts the correct output and reduces effectively the error. It reduces the number of hoops that we miss. This term, if you were to visualize it, is often referred to as something known as gradient descent. We're effectively figuring out what that correct linear regression is, and in the process, we're minimizing the error. We're minimizing the number of missed baskets as we update and tune that linear regression with more data points on baskets that have gone in. So once we have enough data, the robot or whatever is now capable of actually making a basket no matter where it is, even if it's never made a shot there before. And again, how did it do this? It's by coming up with that linear regression and being able to answer the question of what force y do I need to shoot the ball at distance x in order to make a hoop? We basically interpolated or come up with the optimal function that reflects the underlying game physics that allows us to predict what the force is given the given distance. And I do note again that key limitation that this linear regression and prediction really only works if the data we are predicting is actually being able to be modeled with a linear system. A, a single line gives us the perfect solution. So as long as we have data, we can find this line and we can have a perfect prediction. So I leave it with a question to you, which is what would you teach a robot I know if I was teaching a robot, I'd probably teach it to fold my laundry and I'd probably do so with some reinforcement learning and make sure that it gets rewarded if it does so quickly and accurately. So feel free to leave a comment in the description. We have a blog post with more information about this topic also in the description at teachkidsrobotics.com.